Okay, so they're just dead. Wasn't really counting. All right, what a game. Wow. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code itresolves10yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another gameplay video. Do not forget guys, if you are not already, please make sure you subscribe. It really would mean a lot to us. Like the video if you happen to enjoy it. We've been trying to pump out a lot of gameplay for you and obviously with Crimson Vow coming up later this month, we're going to be doing the same thing, uh, hopefully at turbo speed uh, as soon as that new set comes out. But we do have a giveaway going on right now for a free bundle which you are entered to win if you subscribe to the channel. So just a heads up, there are also four other platforms all linked down below if you would like to enter there as well. But let's talk Boros Ignition. Uh, this is a deck by MTG Beast. Uh, again, found it on Aetherhub. Aetherhub is kind of my go-to for finding decks. I just love it because uh, you get all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, and this was, uh, again, originally created by MTG Beast. Uh, it's a very interesting list. I haven't actually given it a huge test yet. Uh, but it has a lot of the stuff that you would kind of expect to be good. Uh, so it plays a lot like kind of the mono white, uh, almost hate bear deck in the sense that it's got like elite spellbinder and brutal Cathar, but it's got the aggressive stuff like Luminarch Aspirant, Intrepid Adversary obviously becomes better late game. Uh, Usher of the Fallen, able to spit out some tokens, but we incorporate red with things like Fireblade Charger, which is just a nice little 1-1. One -one. It's nothing crazy, uh, but Reckless Stormseeker here giving haste to some things, so being able to get in there and attack, uh, and then obviously flip, uh, and Blade Historian. So attacking creatures you control have Double Strike, which is pretty amazing. I mean, that's going to hopefully uh, bolster up our board pretty substantially and get us in for the aggressive attacks very uh, easily. Uh, now, we do have Showdown of the Skulls. This is going to help us move forward with our game plan and hopefully punch out some more power. Uh, but uh, the big card and the card that this is actually kind of named after is Angel Fire Ignition, which is a sorcery for three mana. Uh, put two 1-1 one -one counters on target creature. It gains Vigilance, Trample, Lifelink, Indestructible, and Haste until the end of the turn, and then you can flash it back for four, uh, which is pretty amazing. I mean, that's a lot for three mana. Um, I think the trick with this card is that it is at sorcery speed, so we are going to have to pick and choose our time, and we may run into removal spells here and there that are that might fizzle this spell. The, the positive, though, is having flashback on this just means that we're able to uh, bring it back and maybe use it again if need be. Uh, as far as lands go, we do have Den of the Bugbear as a one of, and then two Cave of the Frost Dragon. Nothing too crazy, too unexpected there, but I'm interested to see how this goes. Um, I do really like the mono white list in uh, today's standard. I think it's quite good. It's obviously a little more focused on playing multiple spells a turn, uh, whereas this is just kind of like hit the curve uh, and power things out. So we'll see how things go. One thing I did want to check because I actually didn't count. We have 23 lands, which I actually think is OK with the two, the four drop slot being really our max. I think that's fine. So let's test this out, guys. Let's have some fun. Let's see if we can get some wins and see how it goes. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. And truthfully, we just can't keep this. Uh, no white mana is definitely a problem for us. So let's go ahead and throw that one back. Uh, fortunately, this is a little better. It's still not great, but uh, it does kind of work. I'm actually going to throw the charger back here. Uh, any land gets us Brutal Cathar, but any red land gets us the Reckless Stormseeker, both of which are very high value cards in this list. So I'm all too happy to take those there. Uh, I think what we definitely do here is just activate uh, the Usher. I don't really want to throw out the Intrepid Adversary yet. Uh, I'd really like to be able to power out um, some counters onto it and that kind of thing. So we'll see. Give me a land. No. OK. Um, unfortunate. I think in that case, we will go ahead and throw this out. We do want to keep things moving uh, and keep the damage race going. The Brutal Cathars are going to be good, assuming they have any amount of creatures. Uh, the, the Brutal Cathars are just kind of sick. Oh, look. Look at that. <laughs> uh, we're going to Brutal Cathar, Brutal Cathar, potentially. All right. And in fact, that is the plan. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's get you out of there. 
Uh, we get our Intrepid Adversary back, which is quite good. Um, and again, we've got a backup Brutal Cathar, so if they do it again, we just get to do it again. Um, okay. Uh, that's fine. I mean, they're working really hard to keep this Brutal Cathar going, uh, which is kind of okay by me. I don't really care that much. Um, all right. They get a 1-1 counter on it. Oh, interesting. Um... Yeah, you know, let's uh, let's try the Elite Spellbinder here. Let's see what they got in their hands. Uh, ooh, lots of good stuff. Lots of really good stuff. Um, I think we take the Maul. I don't know for sure, but I think that's the right play. Um, they've got a very overly aggressive deck as well, uh, and they've hit their land drops, so chances are they're going to win, but you never know. Uh, truthfully, truthfully, if they just play them all, that's not the end of the world. Okay. Uh, cool. Alright, let's Brutal Cathar on their Brutal Cathar. <laughs> uh, and let's play this. We'll auto pay here. We do sacrifice that, but that's fine. Uh, I think we just kind of want to get some stuff down here because they are going to be playing a good bit of stuff. The trick is if we can get a land and get Blade Historian down, uh, they're just gonna sweep. Uh, that's fine. Uh, yeah, we'll just hit here. I honestly kind of forgot that that was the ability on that, so that was my bad. Uh, let's do this and let's attack in. Pretty straightforward. I mean, chances are they're just gonna play like a Maul or something big and uh, hit for much more damage, but it is what it is. We can't help it. Uh, a land would be amazing. They're really trying to hold on to that maw. I'm surprised. Uh, I kind of thought they would just go for it, but I guess they're just trying to clear threats. This is a very straightforward Boros list in the sense that they're just trying to play high value permanence with a bunch of burn. Which, hey, I mean, trust me when I say that is very good. So, uh, unfortunately, not hitting lands is a major problem at the moment. Uh, but not much we can do about it. Unfortunately. All right, dude, I would just play that mall. Equip it up. Get in for a big attack. All right, fine. There's the mall. Oh, they had another one. That's why. Okay, that's fair. We take five. Cool. Um, look, a land. That's actually really helpful right now. Um, so we get in for an attack. It does now have double strike, which is quite good. Um, so we're going to gain six and deal a good bit. Um, I mean, we're still probably just dead here. I mean, realistically. Um, but, I mean, we're not far off from killing them. Theoretically, one attack left. Um, but, I mean, this combat damage to a player turn from your graveyard to the battlefield where X. They don't have any creatures in their graveyard, so that's very helpful. It's okay if they hit us with the Warsinger. <laughs> Why? Do they just equip this up? Sure. They can deal 10. No, they're not going to. All right, cool. Um, what do we want to take out here? I mean, we do get to hit something, uh, which is kind of nice. I guess we take out the Trampler just to get it out of there. Um, I think we just throw this at them. They have to block it. Uh, oh, this does have... Well, we have double strikes, so... We gain three. That's fine. We're kind of encouraging them to attack here, so... Yep. That's cool. Uh, nice. Um... They have to block this one. We're just basically trying to punch through the last points of damage. We should have attacked with the Blade Historian also last turn. That was a freebie on the uh, damage end. Maybe we're throwing stuff away too readily here, but I mean, we have to deal one damage to him at this point, so. Yeah, you got it. We could have killed them this turn. That was a mistake on our end, for sure. Do they have a creature yet? Nope. So Warsinger still does nothing. 
other than just damage, of course, which is very relevant, but it's not gonna... Okay. Oh, uh, it has Vigilance, so yeah, that's fair. Alright, give me something. Uh, hmm. I guess we'll throw it here. Uh, this has first strike. We have double strike. And trample. I guess we don't attack. I don't know, this is tricky. This is pretty tricky. Uh, maybe we, uh, we definitely messed up. We definitely could have won already, I believe, if we had just attacked with the Blade Historian prior. And see, now, yeah, they just get to burn us out here. <laughs> uh, unfortunate. Yep. Uh, this is very good. The Hall of Oracles, by the way, they're just able to power stuff out. Um, maybe that's something we should consider in this list. Who knows? Yep. We have to deal one point of damage. Imagine if we just drew a shock, which we don't have in the deck, but how great would that be? Okay, uh, showdown is helpful. Uh, yeah. Um, I guess we just play the den. Um, we can't really attack, so, I mean, we're just dead here, I assume. They just get to attack in with both, and if they want to pump out a counter, they can. Oh, yeah, well, that works too. All right, well, that was just a mistake on our end. I think we could have won that game, but it's all good. That was an interesting little uh, Boros matchup, so let's jump into game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, and this is honestly a bit of a better hand. We've got the mana that we need. Uh, Turns out it's kind of important, um, and so I'm going to keep this. No one drop, of course, but we do have the Luminarch Aspirant that's going to be able to come down here. Um, looks like mono red, so probably going to have some burn that we have to deal with, but that's fine. Uh, Brutal Cathar might be helpful. If this is goblins, we'll, we'll be okay-ish. Um, interesting. All right. Um, I guess let's go white here, uh, since we've got a second red source there. Uh, cowards can't block. Great. I think let's just do this. Let's put the trigger here, and... Uh... Let's do this. Let's get an attack in for six here. Um, but they can block. Did I read that? Cowards can't block. It's not a coward. That was stupid. Uh, that's fine. Honestly, it doesn't matter that much. We traded off with one of their, you know, early drop creatures, which is cool. All right. You got it. Uh, let's do this and let's reckless Stormseeker. All right. Uh, just going to get an attack in here for three and call it a day. Uh, this Intrepid Adversary might be really, really clutch for us. Um, we can already activate it once, which is obviously going to pump up our board a good bit, but if we can get it pumped up uh, a second time, it's even better, obviously, so we'll see. Um, we might just Brutal Cathar this. Kind of depends on what we draw, of course, but that just kind of keeps our damage race going, and we can give the Brutal Cathar haste to just get in for a decent attack. Why? Just to learn? That doesn't seem worth it. Um, I can't... I can't block. Why would you do that? That was just to get a spirit token. That seems irrelevant. Um, whatever. That's cool. I mean, hey, I made a mistake during the game. Maybe this isn't a mistake. Maybe this is really good for them. Alright. Cool. Uh, I mean... Pretty straightforward, we just kind of keep damaging them up. Uh, hopefully Intrepid Adversary maybe next turn. Depending on what they do, I mean, we could just drop this, uh, bolster up our board a little bit, and might be in really good shape. All right. Hey, look, it's the card that we really like. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to do this. I'm not counting this. I'm just kind of doing it. Um, but I think 
I think we win. <laughs> Um, yeah, actually I picked the wrong thing. <laughs> Technically that was a mistake, but we won! Yay! Alright, <laughs> let's move on to game three. Alright guys, and here we are for game three. Uh, yeah, we definitely keep this. This is pretty solid. Uh, and this is a hand where we might actually just want to throw out the adversary kind of early because we do have the ignition. We'll see. Uh, something to keep in mind, if we put the ignition, the counters on the Fireblade Charger, that's actually really, really good for us. Um, so that is a, a, a fairly reasonable option. Now the question is, do we want to go for the Usher? I'm going to first attack in. Let's see what they do. If they want to block this, that's kind of fine. Um, all right. I'm going to play the Adversary. So the reason I'm doing this is because we've got the ignition, the idea being that regardless of which of these lives, they're both really, really good options for the ignition. The other option was to just play Usher of the Fallen, which is a perfectly reasonable card, um, but it doesn't really benefit as much from the ignition as uh, some of the other stuff that we've got. So um, we will play this for white and let's go for the ignition. I doubt it lands actually. I mean, chances are they've got something here. They left up two blue mana technically three um i'm expecting something but that's cool uh if they counter this we just attack with the charger i guess okay uh yeah good call curious to see what this deck actually is is this like a leer simic leer deck that'd be kind of interesting opponent taking their time but that's cool um yeah, and we just attack in. If they want to block with the innkeeper, that's great. Um, I'm assuming the, what they're worried about is the ignition coming down onto that uh, charger, so totally reasonable for them to, to block that there. If they play any creature, we Brutal Cathar this coming turn and just get it off the battlefield. Uh, looks like they may not, though, which is great. Uh, we can Usher of the Fallen if we'd like. Oh, or, <laughs> uh, I'm just going to Blade Historian. Now they could have another Divide by Zero here. They could have a lot. It is what it is. We can't do too much about it. <laughs> they have Fading Hope. I mean, there's a lot. It's going to be an annoying deck to play against. It's going to be a bounce deck. We, we know. Yep, there's the Divide by Zero. Funny, they could have used that as it was coming down, but I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, so something we have to keep in mind if there's the mascot exhibition something we might want to try and do is double up on some spells next turn um, depending on what we draw of course but like if they leave up mana here it might be worth it to hey looks like they're not going to be leaving up mana which is good for us we essentially get a freebie turn uh all right Let's throw you out. We can throw this out for white and it's kind of okay. Um, hmm. How do we want to do this is the question. We can Brutal Cathar, uh, which would get a token out, which just means the Seeker's Chariot is less likely to hit. Uh, alternatively, we can just Blade Historian and Usher, which I think I'm going to do. Um... This doubles up on spells still. Granted, they might get an attack in here, but like this sets us up for a really good Intrepid Adversary next turn, um, which I think is just going to be better. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? We're just here to learn today, guys. Um, I do kind of like the, the play pattern of this deck. It doesn't seem as good as some of the other Boros decks that I've seen or played. Um, but the idea is really cool. Angel Fire Ignition is just a sick card. So I'm with it. I get it. Obviously not going to block here. They just get a token. That's fine. I don't really care. No blocks. Going to take four. Cool. Um, now chances are they've got something to deal with our stuff. One, two, three, four, five, six. Cool. Uh... <laughs> All right, um, hmm. Let's go for this and see what they do. 
because uh, obviously they've got something. <laughs> There's like no reason why they would leave up this much mana. All right, cool. Um, let's just make sure that it taps properly because we can still Usher of the Fallen, so. Um, all right. I'm just going to get in for an attack. I'm not even going to worry about blocking these little... this guy. Um, we deal a lot more damage on the attacking end, not on the blocking end, so I'd much rather... Sure. I'm glad we didn't play the other Usher at this point, then. They really wanted that scry, and they scryed to the bottom, which is really good for us. Okay, there's Memory Deluge as well. Cool. I mean, great for them that's awesome uh hopefully they didn't get too much they're just gonna block here yeah let's usher pretty straightforward play um next turn we do have the angel fire ignition if we like it uh we also just have the brutal cathar i mean this all depends on what they decide to do they can just mascot exhibition uh play out the Asika's Chariot, get an attack in. Like, they've got some good options here. I guess they don't want a Mascot Exhibition. Maybe they just want a Memory Deluge. I'm not blocking. I... Uh, no. Um... No blocks. That's fine. I don't care. Um... I wish you could boast multiple times a turn. That'd be really sick. Just pump out two twos for two. Thanks to Intrepid Adversary. Like, that would be really sick. Okay. Good. <laughs> sure. Uh, that's a little scarier now. Um, hmm. Intrepid Adversary is still kind of our best friend at the moment because it does have lifelink. Um, and we may want to blow up this chariot by blocking with it. I don't know, to be honest. Um, it would gain us some life back and keep them from doubling up all their tokens. If they just have another epiphany, that's going to suck. <laughs> really? Um, I was about to say, that seems a little aggressive, but sure. All right, so I do think we kind of have to block the chariot now. As sad as that is, because I don't want to lose the adversary, I do think that's just the play. So let's do that. If they've got to move, they're going to have to play it. They're just going to return it. Seriously? Okay, well, I mean, turns out that was a really good block for us. Um, <laughs> that was a less in impressive turn than I was expecting. All right, so they just play the chariot. Cool. Yeah, you got it. Interesting. Okay. Um, like, I kind of just want to throw this out onto the Intrepid Adversary. Let's do it. This gives it Vigilance, Trample, Lifelink, Indestructible, and Haste. All of which is pretty good, as it turns out. Uh, and all of these have Double Strike, which means, I mean... This seems like a very good turn. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, they do have one mana available, so they could have a Fading Hope, 100%. Which would suck, given that it would get rid of the Intrepid Adversary. Um, and we might just die because of all this, but it's fine. We're banking on a lot to work here. Um, Alright, cool. Good. Let's get rid of some of these little guys. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I'm assuming they don't have anything to hit the adversary. They've got the one mana available and one unknown. I'm not banking on them having it, though. All right, cool. Puts us back up to a decent life total uh, and dealt a good bit of damage to them. We also get a second Usher out, so... I mean, not feeling 100% great, but feeling uh, better, I will say. Um... It's an interesting game, actually. Uh, this is going to be our last game also. I'm looking at the time. We're at 25 minutes, so that's pretty close to our 30-minute uh, timeline. Let's see what they can do. There's the mascot exhibition. Great. 
Uh, they can double up on their 4-4, which is definitely the right call. <laughs> what do we need? Um, truthfully, another ignition would be kind of sick. Uh, giving trample and everything like that, like that just makes a big difference. I'm curious as to why they crewed that way and not just with their 4-4. They would have had to tap less. That seems like the right idea, but whatever. Uh, we're taking the 4 they get their token regardless, and 4 damage at this point isn't the end of the world, so I'm going to take it. A land. Okay. Um, so you can Brutal Cathar plus activate one of the Ushers. Alternatively, we can just activate two Ushers. I think I'd rather go this route. To get rid of one of these 4-4s. Four Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, oh, actually, we can just double up on this. Yeah, let's just do this. Just get rid of both 4-4s. Four and then they have much less impressive tokens. <laughs> and we get free attack Not free attacks, but basically reasonable attacks all the way through, whereas the 4-4s four being on the field makes a big difference. Uh, they can block, like, these guys. All right, let's attack in. Um... What an interesting game this has turned into. I really am intrigued by this deck. I don't know that I love it. It doesn't seem to have a huge payoff. It does have the Hall of the Storm Giants, which it can attack in for a lot of damage here. But, I mean, we should be able to clear out some amount of these tokens, uh, which is great. I would definitely just be blocking with the one ones at this point. I don't, th I mean, the flying is somewhat relevant, I suppose, but like, uh, if you're not powering up those tokens, the likelihood of them winning you the game is quite unlikely in my opinion. So yeah, I would just block with them. Cool. So we're going to get them down to only a handful of tokens here. We also gain six life, get ourselves back up to 24. Now the only worry is that we have overcommitted a good bit. I don't know what they could possibly have though. It looks like they're just a bounce style deck, so I'm not really, I mean, I don't think at least there's a sweeper that I need to worry about. Um, maybe I'm wrong. We're also keeping our cards in hand low, so this doesn't do anything. Um, <laughs> that just does nothing. <laughs> I think that was a mistake on the opponent's end, uh, but it is what it is. Maybe we win. Yeah. Okay. I think we're. I think we're good. <laughs> um. What do we want to draw? Ignition. Ignition would severely help our cause. Uh, just giving trample is great in this deck. Um. We could power up the adversary even more. Oh, very cool. Um, I don't think that's all that great, but that's pretty cool. Yep. It's good in general, but like untap each snow permanent you control. So the trick is they, I mean, I guess they play memory deluge off of it if they attack with it, which is good, but uh, so we can actually double block this here, which I think is the right play. Uh, we do lose one of these guys, but it just means that they're not doubling up on tokens every turn. So I'll happily block here. We lose a 3-3 for a 4-4 four, four, uh, that copies tokens. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to do this twice. <laughs> Wow, uh, yeah, easiest time I've ever had doing that. All right, let's attack in. <laughs> I mean, that seems pretty good. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. They can still do a lot to us, so, like, I'm not... We're not out of the woods, but, like, I feel like we're in a much better position. The Jorn is a little scary. I'm not going to lie. But they, like, kind of have to block everything or they die, right? Yeah, so we're back up to 32. They've got two creatures left. I mean, 
we're doing some work. Okay, so yeah, definitely the right call is to play the memory deluge here. See what they can draw. But I don't know what they could have. I truthfully don't. For four mana, I mean, I guess they can attack him with Jorn and replay something big, but like, they've got two cards left. Maybe more if they've got some cards. <laughs> okay, an innkeeper is not gonna do it. Um, that's helpful. What's that last card? And do they attack with Jorn? If they attack with Jorn, I would be scared. All right, they didn't. Play you out, just because. Why not? Bounce it. Do it. <laughs> Bounce the thing. All right. Um, I mean, this is pretty easy. Just attack with all. And I will just go ahead and boast these. There's not a big reason not to. Holding on to the Blade, his blade Historian because these don't stack. Just something to wor worth noting here. Um, and they can bounce this. It's fine. I don't really care. We don't need Double Strike to to <laughs> to win this game. Um, all right. So they block there. They have to block. Okay. So they're just dead. Wasn't really counting. All right. What a game. Wow. Okay, let's uh let's chat about this deck. All right, guys. Uh so, uh Boros Ignition, what do we think? Uh well, first of all, again, uh credit where credit is due. Let me pull this up. Uh MTG Beast is the one who created this game. I just or this deck, not this game. Uh and so just want to make sure that everybody understands I did not create this list. MTG MTG Beast did. Uh and it's a fun one. I actually really liked it. Uh I love Ignition as a card. It's definitely the card you want to have. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't see it do too much until that last game, but in that last game, I think it was very, very crucial to our win. Uh, being able to pump up the adversary and get in there for a double striking 6-2 or 6-3 or whatever it was uh, that can gain us a lot of life. I mean, that's that's pretty crucial in a deck where, you know, Hall of the Storm Giants can end a game very quickly. So uh, it slowed them down a good bit. I think this deck works relatively well against a lot of the bounce decks that that style deck that we saw at the very end there uh where they're bouncing one thing a turn or maybe two things a turn um it's kind of okay because we can replay so quickly um it's not perfect but i do think it's quite good against those so i actually really enjoyed this one do i think it's better than other boros decks maybe maybe not i think it's at the very least still fun and so i would still try it out um and yeah ignition's a really cool card so anyway thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed it please leave a like on the video if you did that really would make a big difference for us uh and again subscribe if you were not already it would mean a lot uh and it does enter you to win the free crimson Val bundle uh which will be announced on the 24th here on youtube so do keep that in mind but guys thank you so much i love you all i hope you have a fantastic day i will hopefully see you very soon for some more gameplay videos i'll see you then